What is up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is it that you need to do to start getting referrals into your restoration company from insurance agents. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about the two different types of insurance agents, captives and independents. Guys, if you wanna get jobs coming into your business from insurance agents, you've got to know the difference between these two. If you own a restoration company, you wanna get jobs coming into your business from insurance agents, you do not wanna miss this video. Let's go. All right, guys, so as we get started, do me a big favor. Please go ahead and hit that like button right now and drop me a little comment. It helps the algorithm out, makes me feel good. Let's go. As you know, there are two types of insurance agents. You've got your captive agents and you've got your independent agents. So we'll start with the very top. What is a captive agent? A captive agent is an agent that only sells one brand of insurance. Examples of this would be like State Farm, Liberty Mutual, Allstate, Farmers. Those carriers use captive agents. They can only sell that specific brand. Whereas with an independent agent, one specific agent might sell Chubb, Auto Owners, Encompass, Nationwide, Travelers, Foremost. An independent agent will sell multiple lines and multiple types of insurance. Now that you know what the two different types are, let's take a look at some of the differences between the two. So characteristics of a captive agent are they're typically very loyal to their brand. Have you guys seen any local State Farm agent? I mean, dude, they're all about the red, okay? Like they're all about the brand. It's all about State Farm. That's all they care about. If you've got an Allstate agent, they're all about the brand. When you're talking to an independent dude, they don't care about the brand. They might sell five or six, but when you're talking about a State Farm agent, baby, they wear red, they bleed red, they all red. So that's one characteristic. They're very loyal to the brand. Another characteristic of your captive agents is this. For whatever reason, captive agents tend to flock and hang out with other captive agents. If you don't know this to be true, go find some of your local State Farm agents in your market, in your area, and get on their Facebook page. I guarantee you they are friends with their other State Farm agents. Yes, it's a little bit weird because they kind of compete with one another, but dude, they're like fraternity brothers. They're like all running around together in really tight circles. So once you get in with one agent, there's a pretty good chance that you might have a good opportunity to meet some of the other agents. That is something that is unique to captive agents. Now here's something else about the captive agents. You need to be aware that they're not gonna want claims to be filed just for no reason. They're gonna be very, very cautious about a claim getting filed. Why? Because if that person has too many claims, they might get dropped by the carrier. If they get dropped by the carrier, yo, he can't sell any more insurance to that person. They're done. They're gone. If they get too many claims, they lose them as a customer. On the other hand, if they were an independent agent and they got dropped by Nationwide, he could just turn right around and put them in some type of traveler's policy. Now, I don't know why you'd ever want a traveler's policy, but nonetheless, the independent agent has the ability to put them with another carrier. So something else about the captive agents, for whatever reason, the captive agents are typically the largest carriers, okay? Like, just go back to what we said earlier. You've got State Farm, you've got Liberty Mutual, you've got Allstate, you've got Farmers. These are some of the biggest carriers in the country. So what does that mean for you? I'm just saying like this, if you get in with State Farm, State Farm is usually gonna have a large market share. If you get in with Allstate, you're gonna get a large market share, okay? Another thing that I've seen with the captive agents, they'll typically have a younger office, okay? They'll, be, they'll have like one agent that's in their 30s, maybe in their 40s, and it's just a typically younger demographic top to bottom. You get to go looking at the independents, there's gonna be a lot of old people at the independent offices. They just are, they've been around a long time. In some cases, if you've got an independent agent, they might be able to sell their company, sell their book of business. Take for instance, State Farm doesn't do it that way. So if I'm 60 years old, okay, and I'm about to retire, I don't just get to go sell my book of business, okay? State Farm takes it back. Now, I don't know exactly what they do, how that stuff works. But here's what I can tell you. They will take a 65 year old man, okay, that has, I don't know, 15,000 policies in Houston, Texas, and they will take all of those policies and then they will split them up into some junior agents and they'll give it to a 30 year old brand new agent. Now that really matters because that is unique to captives. You're not gonna get that from an independent. So I'm gonna give you a little deep dive hint right here. So the reason why that's really good is because if you're a younger person, okay, and like when I was doing this stuff, in my early 30s, all right, I didn't really get along with those old farts. But when I'm talking to somebody that's roughly my age, a new State Farm agent, we have a lot more in common. But here's the key difference. They've already got like 7,000 policies as a book of business. They don't know how to run a company, not yet anyway. They're brand new to it. 
and they've already got a whole bunch of policyholders, meaning any one of those people can have a claim on any given day, and that new young agent may not know how to handle that. That is an opportunity for you to serve them. Now, I'm not exactly sure how farmers and how Allstate do it, but I know that State Farm does it that way, and that is a huge benefit if you know how to work over agents, especially if you're younger. If you're under 45 years old, baby, that's where you need to be. That's good stuff. Let's jump over to the independent agencies for a minute. We've already talked about they can sell a whole list of carriers, right? One of the other things that you will see with independent agencies is they write more various weird types of insurance. They're not gonna focus just on homeowners. They might do a lot more commercial policies too, a lot of life insurance, just other stuff not related to homeowner policies. One agent that I know up here, we're good friends, like his entire business is like marine policies, like they're writing insurance for truckers, okay? So like, yeah, they may sell some homeowner stuff, but like, just be aware that 95% of their stuff can come under a very unique niche business. Another example is a lot of the independents will spend a lot of time and energy writing like general liability commercial policies, right? Or getting into the workman's comp world. Those are things that you won't see out of your small captives. Another thing is this, a lot of the independents are older established multi-generational family businesses. So you might have three or four generations there. So why does that matter? If you're a younger guy and you own a restoration company, you might get in with the third generation, you know, the grandson or the son, just know that you gotta work your way up to the top to get the poppy, you know what I'm saying? Another thing about independence is for whatever reason, they tend to write policies with some good old rich people, you know? They'll offer stuff like Encompass and Chubb. In case you guys don't know, Encompass is kind of like, that's the Cadillac line for Allstate. So while you may hate Allstate, an Encompass policy can pay you fat. If you don't already know, Chubb is also a carrier that specializes in high net worth individuals. So you got Fireman's Fund, Chubb, Encompass. Those are all carriers that will write high net worth policies, and those will come from your independent agents most of the time. Your independents will a lot of times write policies for some of your wealthier people. Now, a lot of that might be too, because a lot of your wealthy people also own a business, and sometimes those independents might write their commercial policies and their homeowners, etc. But for whatever reason, just know this, the independents may have more rich people in their bag. Now, if you're gonna build relationships with independents, remember what I said earlier, if you become the go-to person for water damage restoration for that agent, just be aware that those guys are gonna write some pretty complex policies at times. They're independent agents. So if we think about 30 year old guy or girl that just took over for State Farm, like they may not be writing these very complex deals, okay? But if you got a 50 year old independent agent, they might write this big, huge policy that encompasses all of their rental properties, this portfolio, that portfolio. I'm just telling you, I've got a lot of calls for claims for water damage. And the ones that were the most weird came from independent agents. They just did. And I think it's because they were working, again, with people that had a lot of money and they had different types of policies. And I've got news for you. A commercial policy is a lot different than a traditional homeowner's policy. And that's going to matter because you need to know what you're doing because you don't want to burn the bridge with that agent, okay? The policies look very, very different. If you don't understand policy very well, you might wind up working a claim that gets denied. Ask me how I know. And another one is like Lloyd's of London. I had never done a claim with the Lloyd's of London before, but ironically enough, we had a commercial agent send us out to go do a job and it was Lloyd's of London. And dude, this was a bio. It was actually, it was a murder. It was disgusting. It was in Nashville. So this is a little side note. So I guess we'll talk about the murder real quick, but it was a bio job. We got in there, dude got stabbed. He had been in the house for like, I don't know, two weeks, two weeks, August, Nashville, no air conditioning, baby, no AC. Yep. And they got the call because the neighbor started smelling some stuff. And anyway, long story short, we got called out there and it was just disgusting. Oh, it was, it was horrible. It was horrible. But here's what I want you to know about that. We wound up doing that job. Lloyd's of London was the carrier on that one. And that one wound up getting denied. It was like a $10,000 claim and it was disgusting. We still got paid and everything. The news for you, if Lloyd's of London can squeeze out of something, they will. They got out of paying that bio claim because they were claiming some microbial fungus exclusion for blood. It was so dumb. But anyway, here's what I'm telling you. Those aren't the types of claims that you get sent out. Like, Lloyd's of London's different. That's different than State Farm. You know what I'm saying? Like the weird claims with weird carriers probably gonna come from your independent agents. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Follow me? And for whatever it's worth, this was a rental. So I think it was some type of commercial policy and it was fitting in his balloon portfolio of his rental properties. And again, that's why we get back into that whole thing there. So here's what I'm saying. With independent agents, it can be complex. The captives, usually more simple. And hey, while we're on the topic of murder and bio, if y'all want me to do some more videos telling you some of the stories and, and walk you through some of that, 
drop a comment down below. Tell me bios. Tell me trauma. Dude, we did some good ones. I could even tell you the first story. Freaked me out. So if y'all haven't done a bio, if you have done a bio, drop a comment down below. Let me know if you've done it. it. Takes a special breed to do those jobs. That is for sure. So here's another thing that you need to know about independent agents. Remember I said earlier that the cats of agents can be very loyal to their brand. The independent won't. The independent will be much more likely to stick up for their customer than the captive agent. Why? Well, because the captive agent gets thrown out like baby in the bathwater, right? Like if the state farm adjuster is kind of a peckerhead, well, the agent is going to get assumed to be thrown out as well because they hate State Farm. Whereas if you're working a claim and it's maybe a traveler's claim and the customer has a horrible experience, then the agent can say, oh, well, dude, that guy's a freaking chode. I don't like travelers. Let me put you over here with Safeco. That's very important because now you've got someone else that can kind of stand up and be an advocate for the insured. You're going to get that with independence. You won't get that as much with the captives. Now, that doesn't mean the captives don't love their clients. I'm just telling you, they're not going to yell at that adjuster or they're not going to take an adversarial approach to the carrier as a whole, okay? I'm telling you that an independent might, an independent should, see if they do. But if I can give you a little bit of advice real quick, if you're having problems getting paid from adjusters and all that other stuff, any agent, here's what they really want. They just don't want a big freaking storm and a big fuss, okay? Like, yeah, they want you to get paid, but they'd rather not hear about the problems, okay? So you need to learn how to get paid and work it out. Don't let the agent get drugged into the mess. Do not let the agent get drugged into the mess. If you're on a job and it was sent to you by a plumber or an agent and you're having a problem getting paid and it gets back to the referral party that you've got a problem, yo, you, my friend, are the problem. You've got to be able to make that stuff go away. Sometimes that's going to mean not getting paid as much. Don't want to lose your referral tree. And while we're on the topic of adjusters, this is pretty important too. If you have got an adjuster in your market, two adjusters, and it's with a captive agent. If you don't get along with that adjuster and you're like, you guys don't see eye to eye, you're not going to be able to get referrals from that captive agent because every time that agent sends you something, you're going to get that adjuster out there that you do not like. Okay. So if you've got a beef with adjusters, that's pretty much going to take all of those agents from that carrier. It's going to put them out. Okay. You don't want to get an adjuster assigned to that that you can't work with. The difference is with you working with an independent, you're not guaranteed to get that same carrier. There might be eight different carriers that they're riding. You'll have more flexibility with adjusters with an independent agent. All right. So one other thing I think is also important for you to know, guys, I don't think you need a ton of agents. I think it's more important that you decide what your niche is going to be, right? Like if you're going to go after captives, go after captives. If you want to go after independents, go after independents. Figure out what your niche is and, and niche down, okay? Like in Nashville, I think there was 5,000 agents in like our seven county area. You ain't focusing on 5,000. You need to focus on like 30 and under, okay? 30 agents or less, okay? You don't need all of that stuff that's too much for you to focus on. So niche down, pick out what you want to do and see what you can make work. If you don't know and you can't figure out your niche, you need help, go to workwithshane.com. We can talk. I can help you figure out what your niche is going to be. It depends on what market you're in, really. But let's go back to this. You need to know what your insurance agent's niche is, okay? Even if they are a captive agent, you need to know where they're getting their book of business. Some insurance agents like to focus on auto. Some insurance agents love to focus on life insurance policies. Some of them like to go into the commercial world. You need to have a pretty good idea about what the desired goal and what the angle for that specific agent is. What type of policies do they have and what do they want? You just need to know what their niche is, okay? For instance, we had one agent, Adam. So he was out in West Nashville and his niche was like rental policies. And then he would jump in to get their auto and then he stuck with them until they bought their first home. And that's how he got into that. Does that make sense? So like his target market was the younger crowd. What does that matter? He was good, he was okay. But then we had other guys, I can't remember some of their names, but like some of them already specialized and focused on getting homeowner policies, maybe through real estate agents and mortgage brokers, et cetera. In other words, they were more likely to go ahead and sell homeowners policies than maybe Adam was. Adam was kind of incubating these customers for months or a few years, okay? Just know this, they're all gonna have angles. You need to know what they are. Talk to your agent, find out what they want, see how you can help them grow their business. Now, you guys haven't asked me yet. So which ones did I like the best? Which ones would I go after and why? Well, drum roll, I actually preferred the captives, right? I preferred the captives. And the reason why I preferred the captives was this, and it was the key distinction that we're talking about. When the old freaking white hairs, they, they retire, State Farm will split up the book of business and they'll give it to a couple 30 year old kids, right? 30 year old kid. You're 30 year old kid when I'm 46, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, they'll split it up, 
to people that have been, they've worked underneath agents before and they're brand new to it. They get a big book of business and they don't know what they're doing. Those are people that could really use your help. So I like them for that. Okay. The other thing that I liked about the captive agents, it was the fact that they all swam together like fish, right? So like if you got him on one state farm agent, dude, you could get in with all of them in the market. And yes, while they did kind of compete, dude, they were friends. They were like fraternity brothers. A really good angle that you could go after is if you get in with one agent, uh, then maybe you can like host a top golf event with everybody and let that one agent, you know, invite the other agents. That's the best way to really figure out how to get everybody in one room where it's not you having to go call on every one of them, okay? Use one agent to open up the door to get to other agents. That happens with captives. And lastly, the other thing about the brand awareness is like, dude, Facebook. Facebook was so big. like. Once you get in with one insurance agent, okay, especially like a state farm one, and they're friends with each other on Facebook, and you start liking their posts or commenting, dude, Zuckerberg takes care of the rest, baby. Start showing all of your feed to them, and y'all get to be friends, and like, that's it. I mean, like, you want to talk about, like, how do you get in front of them at 7.30 on a Friday night, okay, while they're waiting to get seated at dinner? That social media angle, and that is really good with agents, and that's going to happen with the captives, okay? That happens with the captives. So... What am I telling you? I like captives the best. And the other thing is they're bigger carriers. And honestly, a lot of you guys struggle getting paid by the big dolls like State Farm and Allstate. And dude, they are the easiest to get paid from. They are, they're big companies. They do it the same way every time. And dude, if y'all have a problem getting paid, you need to go to workwithshane.com because they should be the easiest ones to get paid. They do it the same way every time. You just don't know the holes in the system. I can tell you that, okay? So yes, you can do great with independence, but if I was starting all over again today, I would go with captives and that's the reason why. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, I've got three things for you. Number one, if you haven't yet, click on my face below and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, we put out new content each and every week. Also, if you want me to help you grow your company, go to workwithshane.com. Workwithshane.com, put in your information, we can get on a call and see how we can help you grow your company. Lastly, there'll be some other videos right here. If you want to watch more content about growing your restoration company, check out one of these videos. We'll see you guys on the next one.